reading all those books and having the coach and every day think about um, how can I improve myself is a big difference to the business as well. That is really career to business forward. Esbjörn is really deep into it as well. We're totally different people um, since we started the business. You're listening to The Growth Booth, the show focused on achieving lifestyle freedom through online businesses. Whether you're looking for step-by-step strategies to start building an online business, simple game plans to grow your business, or proven lifestyle freedom frameworks, you are in the right place. Stay tuned and be sure to join the thousands of listeners already in growth mode. Hey, Booth here. Welcome to episode 30 of The Growth Booth, where today I'm joined by someone who I have worked a lot with over the years. His name is Yelmar, and Yelmar is based out of Belgium. He's come from being uh, a complete newbie in online business to building a business that earns him hundreds of thousands of dollars per week, and he's built that business with his brother. So uh, I thought I would get uh, Yelmar on the call with us here today to talk a little bit about his journey and to hopefully leave you with some inspiration about what's possible with building an online business. So uh, Yelmar, uh, welcome to the call. Where in the world are you today? Uh, I am in Belgium, as a matter of fact, today. So, well, and pleased to be here, by the way. It's always good to talk. So um, the reason I ask that question is because uh, Yelmar is an international pilot, and normally when I'm talking to him, he's popping up all over uh, all over the world. In fact, uh, there's, there's been times when he's been down here in Buenos Aires, which is where um, I am at the moment. So uh, you're back at home uh, with the family in, um, in, in Belgium. Um, tell us a little bit about how this uh, this amazing business that you've built sort of started and what was the motivator in, in doing it? Obviously, you've, you've built a very successful um, career as an international pilot. So what was the motivation in building your online business? Well, as an international pilot, uh, by the way, I fly for British Airways uh, at this stage, but I used to fly for the National Airline of Belgium, which was Sabina. Uh, but as a pilot, I realized um, uh, with a computer anywhere in the world, I could do whatever I wanted. Um, But the major thing was that I also felt very vulnerable uh, at being employed in a business uh, that that typically goes from heights to lows in like months, very dramatically. Nearly no airlines may ever make money. Anyways, I never felt really uh, at ease. And I always had this drive during my life to be sort of self-sufficient, which I wasn't at any stage really, even though I was a successful airline pilot getting a decent salary every month but that that itch was always there so i started trying to find stuff online see how do i start and it opened i ran into well you uh, and steve uh, found blueprint academy and then there i took the leap to join the business group because i i had already learned that you need to find the expertise where you can find it i mean where where, where you realize it is at its finest uh, so i thought right i'll take the leap i'll just join um your group and see how it goes from there right. and that's really where it all started because you guys encouraged me to start into um, amazon i think it was the first bit and and everything rolled from there and i think this is going back correct me if i'm wrong but somewhere around 2015 2016 does that sound about right yep yeah yep, that's correct absolutely and how does how does it work being an international pilot i mean do you have um do you sort of do a long haul flight and then you've got a couple of days when you don't fly uh, how, how does your schedule work and how does your business fit into that it's it's a bit like you just said indeed i, I fly i try i fly 75 percent of the time i have 75 percent contract now to be able to work on the business more which is one week during the month seven days i don't work i'm sure that i'm off so i can plan any meetings that i really have to do i will plan in that week but otherwise i fly two or three times to a, some somewhere far away like for example buenos aires indeed uh, and depending how far it is, there's legal requirement of rest. So it's one or two days, 24, 48, sometimes 72 hours there, and then I fly back. Um, but it means obviously when I'm there, um, the family, so I got a wife and two kids, um, are not there by default because I'm just working. It means that I'm totally free to work all the time if I want to on my Mac, on the business. So it, it's the uninterrupted possibility to work and be creative is 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 probably a bonus 
you, you've really just um, summed up the the geographic freedom that an online business gives, and you're the perfect example of it because uh, you are literally uh, globe trotting all over the world any any given day. Um, never not quite know where you are. So um, that's that's amazing, and I love what you've done. If we get into a little bit more of the details now, um, what? Uh, so you mentioned why you wanted to start a business. What was the first? business that you started was that the amazon physical products on amazon that you mentioned correct correct steve your uh, blueprint academy partner um was my first mentor uh and he recommended at that stage to indeed um go for something that had that is not easy to enter but has clear sort of rules so if you be if you're smart about it and and you guys had the framework um it it is possible to enter there with a reasonable chance of success so i did that followed the the the, the knowledge and the, the the playbook and indeed got to one product a pizza stone it was at that time uh, i landed on i changed it redesigned it and then i basically was a one product business at that time but still how, we how was that product, to over how 100 was that product going was the product making money or how, how did that first product that, it was it was uh, as from the first year at by christmas we were really up and running and it was i, I still remember how sort of unreal it felt when, yeah. when things started selling like like all of a sudden you sell one and you think oh great but that's not a business but then by by november and december people were just buying them all over and you, i was just the, thinking oh my god do i have enough inventory even <laughs> yeah yeah you know the funny thing about that i think about pizza stone and i think god that's got to be something that's quite heavy um which doesn't oh yeah <laughs> doesn't um it's not the sort of the the textbook product if you like but it just goes to show that you know the rules of e-commerce are designed to be broken i sometimes share with people that one of the first um types of products that i was selling online were barber chairs and these things can literally weigh you know, half yeah. a ton um literally uh, very very heavy um and they also break the rules and that was uh, when i was selling barber chairs that was dropship uh, model as well which is what eventually <laughs> there you go um you sort of pivoted to so you started with amazon and then uh what happened from there what was what how did that well so that that proved to me that that it that it could work that that starting a business online was something very viable so this made money um but it i was i was needing to grow it but then you guys had come up with um, a facebook driven uh, connect your audience with product uh, system um that i had a good look at and then i thought right i actually believe that this might be the next big thing so i then asked my brother who has always been a teacher for he'd been a teacher for 15 16 years by then um and had never ever done anything in the business world my parents are not entrepreneurs at all and he would just never have done anything like that so by the way i had never done anything before but still i had this urge but he never had that and he first declared me totally mad when i wanted to start a pizza store business that but the fact that i had made it run and that it made money and that you guys were behind it and now the next thing were uh, this this Facebook connecting to product uh, business style that he said right so I actually I now believe that that this might work I'm so frustrated at how education in Belgium at this stage is declining towards and it's, it's just not working anymore right I'll come with you with this venture and so I pulled them in and we started a business together and a few months later we were through the testing phase we followed rigorously the uh, system of testing that that was set up and yeah well that cling 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 you know how shopify yeah. you can switch yeah. that on and it goes cling cling like a, a tiller that of, says you've got best, one sale yeah it's one of the best yeah. widgets for uh, motivating it's a thing where you get a sale yeah. on your website and if you've got a phone smartphone connected up or something you can go ching and um that's yeah. this, this, yeah. it's like a, an alert that oh you've just made some money uh, uh, but then th that happened in like February, March of 2017 or whatever. Uh, but by the end of that year, we'd gone through about a million and a half in sales. Yeah. So it worked that well that we, we were totally drowning then in customer service and every. So we all of a sudden had a big business that we needed to now get everything logistically for, set up for. But indeed, 
it, it, I still remember how the first sales were like, woohoo, oh, ching, ching. And then, yeah. and then it yeah. just kept racing onwards yeah. until by the end of the year, we, we all of a sudden were a real You were a seven figure business. business and you had done that. That was, yeah. a, that was a new, um, that was a completely new business model because it was unrelated to what you'd already done on Amazon. And you went from yeah. zero in that business model to one million in that first year, over, over one million in sales in that, that first year. Correct. Yeah. And I Correct. remember actually meeting um, your brother for the first time in Las Vegas. I think I'd met you previously, but we were holding one of our Blueprint Academy mm-hmm. mastermind meetings in, in Las Vegas. And I think you introduced him as, you know, the skeptic. Um, but he had come around yeah. because you were starting, you were making uh, sales with the pizza stone. And I see that so often. I see that same pattern repeat itself so often. And it's um, it's easy to understand. I mean, I was skeptical when I first came into to online business. I didn't know what was a scam. Is this actually real? Can you really make money doing this stuff? You know, but, um, you know, you guys are uh, a real class act and how you've you've taken that and, and built a, an amazing business with it. So um, your brother comes in and he's part of the building this this bigger business. What how did you guys sort of divvy up the the workload there? Oh, well, by the way, I I like to really stress that I couldn't have done it without him. That right. we really had to have each other. We are we're both very analytical minds. But he has got a very very he's very scientific and he's very deep into He's a science teacher. Right? Analytics. Yeah, he's a science teacher as well. So, yeah. And he had, uh, was halfway in his PhD before he actually started teaching because that's what he really wanted to do yeah. in biochemistry, I think, and something else. So he's really bright. So, but that was the great thing that I I am sort of the uh, the, the business like I'll, I'll do more of the legal thing and organization, etc. And but he was definitely then into the Facebook testing system where he would yeah. build these very very long testing sequences but also look and analyze into the data, like what is real here and dive into it. So he had that going and and he really focused on the Facebook, actual making Facebook work, finding the audiences, et cetera, et cetera. I worked with him, but the way he went in and took it to like the seventh level where I was, that would have always been at level two, <laughs> um, that made that side work. And then together with what I did on the other side, we were able to just, yeah, race. Today's show is brought to you by the Blueprint Academy, a coaching service that I've been providing for about eight years now. If you're interested in getting one-on-one coaching from me and my team of experts, as well as being able to leverage the resources and infrastructure that I've got in my business, then head over to thegrowthbooth.com forward slash academy to get all the details. I'm passionate about helping people build businesses online, and this is where I can help you. So again, head over to that link, thegrowthbooth.com forward slash academy, and find out how we can help you at the Blueprint Academy today. I think also having um, sort of been a fly on the wall of your journey, uh, you were clearly uh, a visionary in believing that this was all possible and and sort of pointing the ship in the direction. And then your brother, uh, Esborn, was very good at, um, like you say, really doubling down on figuring out how it all works and, and um, you know, sort of cracking the code, if you like, of of Facebook advertising, which is where the vast majority of your traffic um, initially came from. So, I mean, I, I think that's another lesson that we keep seeing over and over and over again. Uh, if you find a good business partner, and I don't believe that they have to have a different skill set to you or a different, or, or even the same skill set, they just have to have a common shared uh, vision where you want to get to, then I, I think there's almost never a downside to having a business partner. So. Drop shipping business, you build this business, you've set up a website, you are driving traffic uh, from from Facebook, you get to you know million dollars, over a million dollars in your first year. There must have been a few growth pains along the way. Uh, typical ones we've seen in the past are you know accounts getting shut down, inventory running out. What are some of the, I mean you're going back in, in time a little bit here, what are some of the things that, that happened to you guys? There must have been a few challenges along the way. Uh, in the beginning, it it seemed like every time when we, we when we raced forward, like five steps forward, it looked like we always hit like a brick wall, a high mountain, something that would just make it all stop. That just was like the end. We we can't progress. This is it. 
it's PayPal that says, right, we're stopping everything be until you and then some sort of procedure where there's no human to talk to, and, but you need to get through it, but it's just, and then, that. and then there's another portal where, again, because you grow so fast or because you're doing business, there's all sorts of legal things that kick in that need checking, so that happens. Then there's um, uh, also in Shopify and in other payment systems, it's the same thing. Then we added Amazon and Amazon does that as well. They, they check, they have uh, algorithms, they've got automatic shutdown actions that they take with small new sellers, which we were at that point. So yeah. it's one thing after another in the beginning. And I, I forget like a hundred, it was just yeah. like one thing after <laughs> another. And you just need to keep believing that you can always surmount any problem because every every month every week we had something where we thought how on earth how are we gonna how are we gonna get through this yeah. how are we but ultimately you can i think also uh, that's been having a business partner is helpful because um it's hard to stay positive uh, all the time when it seems like you're getting slammed one day from paypal the next day from shopify the next day from uh, amazon or, or whatever else and they really do um, you know, make people jump through a lot of hoops, but I think um, it's almost like a rite of passage. Like if you want to get to that point where you've got a million dollar a month business, like what you guys have got, there are going to be lots of these ups and downs, um, you know, adversity um, to go through to, to get, sort of get there. Now, um, where, where do you... Yeah, by the way, that... Is, yeah. Yeah, but that, that is also, I rather quickly took this as a positive, like all the difficulty, I, in the beginning, I mean, I, it, it was just very hard and unpleasant, but fairly shortly afterwards, my brother and I started realizing the harder this is, even whilst we were still hitting one wall after another, we thought this makes it very hard for everybody else Yeah, the to get to through this. A lot of them, yeah. yeah. The rest might, like 90% of the rest is probably going to give up anyways, yeah. or this is going to kill competitors. So yeah. the, it also meant the barrier of entry it's best actually it's very good if it's high because you then need to prove yourself which is good yeah. for your self-worth in the end yeah. maybe not whilst you're doing it but afterwards it's very pleasant but the competition um it also needs to go through it as well it also falls into that category of you know these are good problems to have that steve and i often talk about you know you're only going to get asked to provide some identification verification uh, if you're doing a certain number of sales. If you're sitting there doing no sales, then no one's ever going to ask for that. So um, most of the challenges, I think they're, I think they're more challenges than problems, Problems in my mind, uh, are good to mm -hmm. good to have the ones that, that you were having. So um, what I was going to ask you there is, where, where is your market nowadays? Um, is it, in, I know you've done a lot in the United States. Is it still the United States? Is it international? Where do you sell your products? It's still mostly in the United States because um, we, but so it is the United States plus uh, New Zealand. It's basically the English speaking countries. We've kept yeah. it simple so that we so, don't need to translate anything. So, a so bit we're of talking Canada, about, a bit um, of the, Canada, the UK, Australia, New Zealand, United States. Um, yeah. Probably missed a couple there, but um, they're, they're some of the main ones. Yeah. That, those yeah. are the main ones because. We, we are from Belgium, so it felt like very, so why, why don't we also, and then launch into Europe, but we very quickly learned um, there is only so much effort that between my brother and I, we can, we can produce. Yeah. So uh, in America, the United States, there is such a mature market. There is still so much growth for us to be had. So we, but it wasn't easy to say no to all the rest of it. Yeah. But but we had to say no to a lot to double down on the biggest core market and first build that to the, as big yeah. as we could. And that's where we're at now. That's also a little bit of the, the entrepreneur's curse where you see opportunities around you all the time and you're seeing, oh, you know, we could be selling in Germany. Why not? People in Germany would love our product. We could be selling in France. We could be selling, you know, in South America. They would love our product. Yeah. Um, but you know, each one of these markets that you go into is going to present uh, new challenges. And ultimately, sometimes I've seen that they can be a, a real distraction to what people are, are trying to do. And so often, you know, doubling down on one thing instead of sort of diluting your efforts is actually a much faster way to get to, you know, where the business, uh, sort of where you want to get the business to. So, um, okay, so mainly in the, in the US market and talking about without going into specific details of your of your products did you start off 
testing lots of different products in lots of different niches and then you ultimately just got to this one niche that you built a, uh, a business around or how did, how did that work? Well, and uh, taking it back all the way to the beginning, we, we, we had a testing uh, system where we, we tried in all sorts of directions um, with what, what can we match, where do we find the match between the audience and products? Because we, we weren't too fussed about what the product was going to be. If, if we could find a product that matched with the audience and make a difference for them, then there would be a business. And, and there we hit onto the business we're in right now. Yeah. Um, and, and so we've taken it from there and then we were totally fell in love with it because but actually I don't mind if everybody knows what business we're in, if that's fine with you as well, that's fine so in, in the sewing niche, yeah, that we're in the sewing niche. Uh, my grandmother has always been sewing. Um, we forever had our clothes mended by her, et cetera, et cetera. So when we did hit on sewing as the niche we were going to be in, build a very nice store and go for it and be, then, then I, I, we had the connection immediately with the product. Yeah. We then had a steep learning curve onto how do they actually work? What can we invent and improve? But the, the sort of the, where, because my grandma was always a bit lonely, perhaps on her own sewing in, by herself in her little house. So we thought, how can we make a difference for people by giving them better products? So it's more fun and easier, but also how can we connect them? And that's why we built also this, this very big thriving Facebook community um, around our products. We're not monetizing that at all. It's yeah. just to connect people and do good basically for yeah. the people that otherwise would be by themselves. And now they're chatting to, to everyone. Oh, that's fantastic. Say, oh, look at this, look at that. So it's just, it's just lovely to see the energy and what people now, when they're doing their hobby that they already liked, that they're now yeah. sort of every, not even more a beat than they could have been before already. Yeah. So yeah, it's yeah. all, yeah. This, and, that and makes me tick. I think really. it just, oh, totally. And I think it just goes to show as well. I mean, what an obscure niche. Some people, when they're thinking about, oh, I'm going to build a business online, they'll think about, you know, I'm going to get into health and wellness, or I'm going to get into something related to business, or, um, you know, maybe they'll, they'll say, I'm going to get into something related to sports. But I don't think I've ever heard of someone um, having built a, you know, million dollar a month, um, or hundreds of thousands of dollars a month, I should say, at least around sewing it's just absolutely um amazing and like you say you've taken products i guess you started with products that were sort of standard and then you customized and modified them in some way is that, is that how you proceeded it's 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 a it's the mixture of both but uh, what we what our strength is i think um is that we often use products that already exist but might not necessarily ever have been used for sewing so it could be something that's actually a tool for a car, or which is very handy to a mechanic that works under a car, perhaps in the dark. And then now we've used that telescopic thing that they have that has a magnet and a light in it. Um, and we improve it just slightly. So it becomes something that is just the thing when you drop your needles on your carpet. Yeah. Um, okay. So that is just an example of where we try to make a difference by, by adding stuff to somebody's sewing arsenal that they might never have thought of because yeah, it was never no, connected to, a, to their hobby. There's some, sometimes a great way to come up with products. Um, a story that comes to mind or another product um, like this, and I don't think I could build a huge business around this, but um, when I'm um, taking the, you know, the bones out of fish, I use um, long nose pliers, which are obviously a tool more for, you know, handyman <laughs> type stuff. I'm sure there are specialized little pliers for getting all those sharp little uh, bones out of, out of fish but um, I've taken to using I found the best ones uh, to use because I used to find a lot of pliers would slip the bones would slip off them but now I found the best um, tradesman uh, pliers for getting bones out of fish so there's another uh, example of uh, uh, taking one product from one industry and finding good use for it in another uh, are you selling them how, how about don't sell them. No, I haven't got that far. I'm, I'm not sure I might need to uh, look into trademarks and so forth. But uh, anyway, how, how about your team? You've built this uh, business. Um, let's talk a little bit about um, the team that, that goes with it and make, makes everything tick when you are, uh, you know, um, disconnected from the internet for 12 hours on a long haul flight. Well, in the very beginning, it was really only my brother and myself. But 
as, as soon as you have customers, even if you only have a 1% or less um, a complaint rate or whatever, that if you sell a million and a half in sales or you have that, then, then there's going to be questions. Yeah. There's going to be customer service to be done. So that was the first thing where we, we were just drowning. Yeah. All of a sudden, we had all these sales and then so was that, that and there we was, was that your first hire then? yeah customer support yeah yeah customer support was the first thing so we we had somebody who could help us because we immediately uh, immediately like six months after we started we started going on amazon as well with a product uh, so we had then somebody who could solve problems on amazon for us together with uh, and organize with uh, get or sorry and get our um customer service organized in that we didn't need to do it all by ourselves. So we got somebody, and it was in the Philippines, ultimately, where the, they, they've got extremely professional, totally English speaking people that love to help other people. Yeah. Uh, every day, day in and day out, it takes a special kind of person to do that. And yeah. they were there. Uh, and so we found a, a, a lovely lady that was very, very professional at what she did. And she found other colleagues to do it together with her. And so they sort of built their agency yeah. for us, with us. Uh, and now there's uh, seven customer service staff that are full-time yeah. working for us. Uh, but that was the first big thing that needed to happen and that did happen. Uh, and then afterwards yeah. we continued onwards, but that went slower because because we could, in the beginning, we could do a lot still but between the two of us. Yeah. And what about um, at a, like a strategic level? Do you have other other, other than customer support? Basically, do you have um, other people on the team that, that are helping you nowadays? Oh yeah, well, our team is now divided into. There's uh, we have a Facebook marketing manager, we have a uh, social media marketing manager. So obviously, these these all sound like titles, as if then there's another team below, underneath, but they are the team every time right. yeah, yeah, yeah. so we are a team of of 10 to 12 in total yeah is, is what our entire entire company is um so there's somebody that heads customer service facebook and but also for amazon there's one person that is now responsible for everything on amazon um so there's a general manager now as well which is a big leap that we took this year again a big step so yeah we, we had to develop a team because otherwise we couldn't have done it we, the we idea? Could, and it would have What's, what's your thinking behind um, hiring a, a general manager? Is that so you and your brother can step back into doing different things? What's the story there? Yeah, it's, that's, that's a big part behind it um, because my brother, who's always been a teacher, as I mentioned in the beginning, um, he, three, four years ago, also by doing business, you realize anything is possible if you put your mind to it. So there's the world, you can shape it as however you like as long as you really want to, that he realized that if in Belgium, the education system wasn't going to improve itself or by the state, then he was going to get to have a go at it. Yeah. So three, four years ago, he started planning that they, he would finally ultimately get a school going. So and get the connections going. And then ultimately now September 1st, that school will open. Um, so, but that takes up like nearly all of his time now. Yeah. Um, but that didn't happen just overnight. So we saw that coming. So ultimately, we this year we hired the general manager, a, a, a brilliant guy that is really throwing his. Uh, I, he's probably brighter than my brother and me. He's just really going for it as well. So it's it's great to see him do it. But just by having him there, my brother has now the flexibility to is nearly completely do something else. Yep. He's in Belgium as well. Okay, uh, that, that must be nice yeah. being able to, um, you know, meet in person. I know that sometimes makes a difference with um, our business. We try to make sure that we get together with uh, the key sort of leaders in the business um, quite regularly because it's hard to beat that in person uh, meeting dynamic versus um, virtual. Even though we're we're all running virtual businesses now, um, and correct was a hard yeah, yeah. was a hard letting letting go. Was it hard letting go of um, the controls and sort of stepping back and letting other people take up the reins? It's, it, it was not as hard as I thought it was going to be, but still it, it requires a different mindset and it, it requires for me, uh, definitely. It, you have to bite your tongue a lot because yeah. not because you might know the answer, but just because you know that whatever you say, 
is is going to have an impact and the, yeah. everybody will listen to it because they're used to it because you used to rule everything so it's better often not to say anything and just to to yeah. deliberately be in the background and that is that it's it's different i used to be very present and and now i intentionally am not do you so do much it, of yeah. the the day-to-day um operations with your business now or are you more and sort of more like a director's role or what's your day-to-day um uh, role right now with your your online business i still pay the bills so oh. all invoices still uh, run through me um but other than that uh it's now used mostly working with the general manager uh, so that he gets all the support and all the answers to any questions he might have of the business. So I basically support him as well as I can all the time. Think with him about where are we going this year, yeah. uh, the finances also, because you have to fund inventory, et cetera, um, before the end of year peak, et cetera. So you know, uh, it's one more of the, financial uh, now. Right. One of the best hires I think that we made in our business um, over the past 15 or 20 years was a um, CFO, Chief Financial Officer, and she handles um, all of the all of the finances, all of the billing, paying all of the all the team, all the salaries, um, all the money that comes in and goes out. She keeps her eye on it, and for me, that's been a huge weight off my shoulders because I've got someone that I can trust. So at some stage in the future, that might be another good hire um, for you. And then you could really uh, sit, sit back and essentially just um, almost be like an investor or a, a director who, who chimes in uh, once in a while, if that was something that, that you ultimately wanted to do. I'm not sure if it is or not, but um, it sounds like you've built a, a yeah. good team with all the important hires there. Yeah, well, it, 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 the machine appears to work. Um, uh, but with the general manager now entering uh, the fray, it it is being restructured even because that's what his strength is. So it's getting even better. Everybody is now really put into where they realize their strengths are. So which might not have been exactly what we hired them for, but it, we are getting better through. So there's a sort of a, a worldly crisis going on now and we're using it to re- reorganize and get better. Um, but yeah, the, the team with the general manager is now definitely stronger and a good position for me to ultimately really step back even more because the finances, as you mentioned, will be done ultimately by the general manager as well. So yeah, absolutely. Right, that's great. And have you found um, that you need to regularly sort of reset your goals and um, rethink um, your mindset because you started off building a business on Amazon and uh, I can't remember the exact numbers, but let's say you got that to hundred thousand dollars a year or so um, at selling the, mm-hmm. the pizza uh, stones. Then you pivoted the business still in e-commerce and you built to over a million dollars in sales in the first year. Now, most people come into online business and they think, okay, my first objective, I'm going to get to $100,000 a year or $5,000 a month or whatever it might be. And you've sort of taken monumental leap forwards and adding a new zero uh, to the, the bottom line at the end of each month, but you've done that regularly. Have you had to work on uh, your uh, the psycholog- psychology behind it and constantly thinking bigger about what you're doing and not just getting into that comfort zone of, uh, yeah, you know, we've hit $100,000 a month. That's great. This is really good. But pushing yourself and saying, okay, well, we need to be at, what could we do? What would it look like to be at $1 million a month? What would it look like to be at $10 million a month? Is this something that you think about or it just sort of naturally happens? No, it, it was a very conscious, it was a learning curve as well, doing the inner work. So reading many self-improvement books, et cetera, et cetera, is definitely important. I got a business coach as well, like call it a mental coach, but also where you say when you're trying to see where am I going to go with the business? Uh, I, I chatted with you a fair few times uh, when you say, right, where, we do, where do we want to be in a year? What is realistic to be in six weeks, 12 weeks, whatever? Uh, where, do we end up, where do we want to end up in two years? So that sort of discussions I had with you every now and then, as you, as you probably remember. But in the mental capability, so the mental opening to, to, to sort of also believe you can do this and, and, and 
that 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 in your mind is where nearly all the work ultimately comes from but the business will roll if in your mind you can make it work um and and yeah reading all those books and having the coach and every day think about um how can i improve myself is a big difference to the business as well that is really career to business forward esbjorn is really deep into it as well we're totally different people um since we started the business yeah and i think um it's that old saying of what you think about comes about if you keep thinking about something if you keep working towards something then ultimately that can come about and you're your thoughts drive your behaviors and your behaviors drive your results. So um, I'm also a big uh, believer uh, in that. Um, and you mentioned something else. I've just lost my train of thought, but it'll come back to me. Um, in the meantime, though, um, you know, what if someone is listening to this and they're not at the stage where they've seen business success, but they do want to build an online business. Maybe they're building an affiliate marketing business. Maybe they're building an e-commerce business. Maybe they're... <clears throat> Maybe they're starting to think it all sounds too difficult and complicated and we've been talking about the challenges. What kind of advice would you give to that person or what kind of advice would you give to yourself if you could speak to yourself back in 2014 knowing what you know now? What, what would the, the advice you would give to them? I would definitely advise them about the what I just said about books and inner work to work on yourself that is that is a big thing as you just said begin with the end in mind etc etc that is that is important so like read the seven uh, habits of highly effective people for example by coffee and and, and other books uh, the slide edge read read these books repeatedly write down stuff about them that is a big part of it because then you will start believing that anything that looks extremely big is really only a small step you need to take today right. and that the book, The Slide Edge, is basically what we give every team member still when they join our company. I love that book, by the way. One and, of my favorites. And, and that, is, uh, that, that is one of the biggest advice, advice that I could probably give to somebody who starts. If you read a book like that, any massive hurdle that you see in front of you is probably only a small step today. Yeah. It's, um, it's also what um, you know, Steve Jobs famously said about you know, you can connect the dots when you're looking backwards. So when you look back um, at where you've come, you can see how everything connected up. But at some point, you had to have faith in the system. You came into uh, the Blueprint Academy um, and other uh, different coaching programs and other courses that I'm sure you took as well. And you had some faith there. You had faith that, yeah, something from this is going to work. Um, that's also a mindset. That's also um, having belief in even if it's not belief in yourself because you haven't got runs on the board yet, just believing that somehow things are going to fall into place. But those types of things only ever happen if you sort of initiate them and take action to begin with. So I think a lot of it is uh, in, in being brave or having that confidence to just dive into the unknown because that's when something interesting can happen, like starting to sell a pizza stone uh, and then ultimately testing out random products and ending up building a, you know, multi-million dollar business in a sewing niche. Uh, so I think a lot of it is, um, yeah, having faith that something will happen and then just diving in head first and taking taking massive action. And in your case, I think another one of the big um, takeaways from this is it's been um, huge to have a business partner that you've been able to rely on. Um, and, uh, you know, little by little, you've been able to grow your team to pick up the slack. So you can focus on doing less of the things that you don't want to do or um, more of the things that you do want to do. So um, I think your story is Absolutely. Been... And mentors, I suppose, mentorship. If uh, Look around, keep your eyes open, be ready for the opportunities and actively seek out um, yeah, your business partner, definitely if you can, but also mentors, like in a, not in a like, please come do everything for me, but like I've seen you do amazing things. Can I learn from you? Yeah. If that sort of reach out you do, you will find someone yeah. or multiple people. And that is also a massive catalyte. Uh, how do you say that? Something that propels your business for catalyst. Well, wow. there you go. I mean, we've covered a lot of, I think, really, really interesting ground here today. Um, one thing I want to ask you a little bit more about, just because I'm fascinated from an entrepreneurial point of view, and I think it's um, another amazing uh, chapter in everything that you've, you've done in, in your life. 
is about the school that your brother has been masterminding. Can you share a little bit more information about uh, what that is, what the maybe what the uh, the vision is for that school? You mentioned uh, that uh, Esborn was your brother was uh, a teacher and looking at. Uh, you know, ways to improve the, the education in, in Belgium. Obviously, you've got children of your own. How do all these different bits and pieces tie together to uh, push this this vision forward and, and what's it all about? Well, the, the Belgian school system has forever been a very good, high level, good scores in European um, uh, comparison studies, etc. But in the last like 20, 30 years, it's really gone downhill. But we lose places every time up to the fact that now in uh, the last five years, it kids that leave the schools in Belgium at 18, so after secondary school, have like almost in the world, one of the, the least, uh, they're least likely to want to learn more. They're so fed up with it. And my brother being a teacher and then seeing that happening, he tried to flip the classroom, which is a way of getting the students involved to actively learn instead of just sitting there and waiting for the teacher to learn. Um, Many other countries already uh, um, get some of that going, have that in their systems. But we in Belgium are having a a very hard time to get that going. And so he said, ultimately, I'm going to, and then I pulled him into the business and that worked. So now he learned to be the CEO and that anything you try, basically, if you have a vision and then a very, very clear um, will to actually get that vision into reality, then that is what you're going to do. So he said, right, I'm going to get that school going. Uh, And he got in touch with other people and and, and, and so now we're there where the school is actually going to open on September 1st. Um, But the the, the big thing doing that against everything else is that you now need lots of funding to get the school going. Because if you want to open a school and you ask the Belgian government, can we start a school? They might say, right, okay, yeah, jump through all these hoops. And in about 15 years, we might provide the funding. Right. But in 15 years, we can't wait. We, we need to change the education system in Belgium so that as for 15 years like is, a lost, year, is a lost generation. I mean, yeah, that's a whole, that's a whole a lifetime generation. of schooling for, for kids, basically. Absolutely. Yeah. So everybody can do deep learning everybody can become an 18 year old after they've done their secondary school that wants to make a difference in the world that wants to be together with others get the world going forward in um in in a reliable way and then want to learn continually because that's the only way to be these days if you don't want to learn if you don't have a thirst or a hunger to learn in any company you enter in any organization you enter you will need to be that way if you want to be personally happy and if you want to make a difference in that company and for the world so that's why uh, my brother really wanted to start it he has started it against all odds the school is now actually opening on september 1st but we still face um, uh, a funding crunch where some of it we still need to collect and we're trying to do that in belgium which is working fairly well but also if there's anybody in your um, audience that might know how to, and I'm just going to drop one name, but like I know Mackenzie Scott is every year uh, handing out education funding style right. uh, money, etc. But it's, it's not only her. There's there's many others. Yeah. But how could we? Connect? There's a lot of people. Who knows people, how we? Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of people with money that are looking to um, help, uh, especially in education, because I think education. A lot of people agree that. It is a root cause of many, or lack of education is a root cause of many, many other problems. So, um, yeah, I think um, um, how, maybe if someone is interested in, in helping with a project like this or in providing funding, uh, perhaps they could reach out to us at the Growth Booth and um, we've got um, you know, a dedicated team that will, will be able to uh, pass uh, any contacts on uh, to you and your brother, maybe that's a good way that we can do it. I'm not sure if you can share the name of the school or the organisation. That might be another way that people could find you. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's Lab Education, but it's in Dutch, so it's Lab Onderwijs. But it, it'll be in the show notes with the uh, yeah. uh, correct link to the website of the school system. Fantastic. So yeah, they could go through that way, but direct through you, you'll you'll connect them to me. So anybody who can even be yep. like the connector between us and a big foundation or a small one or a yep. private one, anything could be awesome for us and for 
18 year olds year after year after year yeah. that come out of the Belgian school system. Yeah, I think it's awesome. And, um, you know, you're talking about the Belgium school system, but there's no reason why um, once the once it's up and running, it couldn't be shifted beyond that and help a lot of kids um, all over the place. It's the same same system. That uh, we, be, we've, we rolled out. Yeah. We've already had the question from Germany, from uh, entrepreneurs in Germany that say, right, so as soon as that school is rolling, um, it really is so necessary in Germany as well. Please, can we? We said, right, hold on. We're first going to get it going in Belgium. It's yeah. the second school of its kind in Belgium. Um, yeah, let's first do that. But still, indeed, the money towards this is so much bigger than this one school. It's showing everybody else that it can be done because yeah. that is one of the biggest hurdles yeah. many people think. Also in business, the biggest hurdle you have to overcome is believing that it can be done. Yeah, absolutely. I think um, I think the business skills that you and your brother have, have built up are um, going to be absolutely uh, useful in, in this next adventure uh, that you're you, especially your brother is embarking on so i uh, will add the name and the link and everything to the show notes and that will be a good way for people to to reach out and this is episode number 30 of the growth booth so if people go to the growthbooth.com and navigate to episode number 30 you'll be able to find uh, this show obviously along with the show notes along with links to the books and everything else that we've mentioned like the school and that's how you can get in touch if you've got anything uh, that you want to share with uh, Yelmar and Ishborn, or if you've got any desire to be uh, participating in funding um, an exciting new venture uh, like this as well. So, um, look, I think we've covered um, some really, really good ground here, uh, Yelmar. So thank you once again for coming on here and, and sharing your story. It's a real inspiration. I feel um, grateful to have been a part of it from since basically the beginning um, and, and see how you guys mm-hmm. have have gone from strength to strength and having personally met you many times at uh, the Blueprint Academy meetings as well. So um, uh, thanks once again and um, look forward to, to doing this all over again one day soon. Hopefully in the next episode we'll be able to talk about uh, the school and, and uh, you know how that's, uh, how that's been developing. I'm totally looking forward to that next session. Yeah, it was very good to be here, uh, Aiden. Thank you. Thanks very much, guys. This is a wrap for episode number 30. Make sure you tune in next week for the next episode of The Growth Booth. And if you'd like to learn more about uh, how you can get coaching uh, from Steve Clayton and myself through the Blueprint Academy, then head over to thegrowthbooth.com forward slash academy and we'll also include that uh, link in the show notes. That's it from us in this episode. I'll see you on the next one.